This is part of the steady escalation that's taken place uh, during the last five years. Uh, first, we sent in only advisors. Then it uh, developed these advisors were also in combat. Then we sent in the Marines, and the first thing was said that they were there only to defend. And the next thing was that they would uh, shoot back if attacked. And uh, now uh, there is an admission that uh, there are, we're all in. Some others are eager to enlarge the conflict. They call upon us to supply American boys to do the job that Asian boys should do. They ask us to take reckless action, which might risk the lives of millions and engulf much of Asia, and certainly threaten the peace of the entire world. A second deliberate attack was made during darkness by an undetermined number of North Vietnamese PT boats on the USS Maddox and the USS C. Turner Joy, while the two destroyers were cruising in company on routine patrol duty in the Tonkin Gulf in international waters, some 65 miles from the nearest point of land. They put out that propaganda, but they got caught because we were able to disclose within two days that if they would check upon the log of the Maddox, for example, they would find she was only 11 to 13 miles from the bombing of those islands. And of course, that's coverage. And the North Vietnamese knew that it was coverage. Do, we, do our uh, naval vessels afford any cover for these our, operations? Our naval vessels afford no cover whatsoever. Now, the sad fact is history will record that the United States was an aggressor in Tonkin Bay. We were violating the rights of North Vietnam, had no right to proceed on the second day to ourselves bomb uh, North Vietnam, the areas where her torpedo boats were kept. But we had to do it. That wasn't self-defense. Bombing, bombing North Vietnam was not within the right of the president to act in self-defense of the republic. My duties on board the seaplane tender were uh, nuclear weapons officer, on August 4th, there was an alleged attack upon the USS Maddox and Turner Joy, two of our destroyers, in the Gulf of Tonkin. The destroyer personnel indicated at first that they were under attack and later indicated uh, uncertainty as to whether or not they were under attack. Large numbers of torpedoes were supposed to have been uh, fired. The ship was uh, reporting itself as continuously maneuvering to avoid torpedo attack. And yet, there was also indicated in these messages doubt as to whether or not they were under attack at all. And I have a feeling, therefore, that this uh, harassment attack and this attack with uh, 20 or more torpedoes upon two of our uh, uh, destroyers was designed to uh, uh, force us out in a way lest we precipitate a greater struggle. I have a feeling that they've misread America once again. In the course of our conversation, this chief petty officer told me that he was a sonar man on board the USS Maddox and that he had been in sonar, the sonar room, during the attack. He told me that in his estimation, there were no torpedoes fired at the ship or otherwise during that alleged attack. And furthermore, he constantly repeated this, uh, sent this information to the commanding officer on the bridge. The North Vietnamese have no submarines. What is the purpose of that movement? This is purely precautionary so that the fleet will be prepared for all eventualities. What General sort of eventuality, General? Well, possible submarine attack. By whom? By anyone. Well, you always contended that in the uh, first incident they were having... Uh... I'm, I'm contending that having the, sh the Maddox and the Joy there constituted, in view of the knowledge as to what the South Vietnamese boats were up to, an act of constructive aggression on our part. The Vietnamese situation, as I noted on my visit back home last week and this week, has taken on some real spirit and real interest. And I thought perhaps a statement 
by the joint Senate House Republican leadership would be timely and quite in order at this moment. As a result of what we have done in South Vietnam, not only has the psychology changed there, but also it has had a most beneficial effect, in my opinion, among other free Asian countries who looked at South Vietnam as a test. Okay, today, today's the day. It's the big one. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is the one you've all been saying to yourself, what this company needs is a good fight. By the grace of God, we're going to get it. From there, we're going to S and D, search and destroy the thing you guys like. Okay. Some of you, I know this is going to be a shock to you, but it's a switch for old Alpha Troop. We're riding in. And we're not riding in on one of those dusty old APCs. We're going in first class. TWA, Teeny Weeny Airlines. <laughs> well, search and destroy uh, is an attempt to, as the, the first word would indicate, to uh, find the enemy, to search out where he would be, and then to destroy him in his habitat. Okay! West of the stream and uh, east of the road, Roger. What trace do you think is actually in there? Oh, geez, I don't know, about 20 tons, 10 tons. How far back does it go? It's about 30 by 15. Anyways, about 12 feet deep. How do you destroy this much rice? Yeah, the demo man usually blows it up. You're going to blow it up, are you? If they can't get it out, they'll blow it up. It's, uh, it's on milled rice. Detachment consists of two double rotor Chinook helicopters. The Chinooks usually are cargo or troop carriers, but not these. They're gunships. The prisoners that uh, we've captured or have been captured say that this is the most feared weapon outside the B 52s. That is because the amount of ammunition we carry, the very types of weapons, and the amount of time we can stay up on station. At the present time, we have on this a 140 millimeter grenade launcher, two 20 millimeter cannon, five 50 caliber machine guns, and two rocket launcher pods consisting of 19 2.75 rockets. Uh, we usually carry inside two additional M60 machine guns and ammunition for them. And occasionally the crew rat holes a few things that they don't tell us about until they're airborne. Uh, if we work at it, we can unload in about 20 to 25 minutes. But we are in danger of burning out barrels, which we frequently do. I was amazed when I came to this outfit of how accurate the 50 calibers were. I figured they would be known more of an area spray weapon, that they can actually walk those weapons right down the tree line. Now, the 20 millimeter is, of course, very, very accurate and has quite a range. We can start firing with this machine uh, 4,000 meters away, which is considerable distance. The one I fly is known as birth control. 